So it's just now prevention. How do I, what do I need to do? I know many people have heard, um, wash your hands, don't touch your face, um, you know, all those basic sort of um, measures that we can put in place to protect ourselves. But I know that there's also some interesting information that you have around, you know, reducing the viral load and that kind of thing. Yeah, um, exactly. And, you know, even as you mentioned that South Africa is going to get the vaccine maybe the second quarter of next year. If you think about even for the whole planet, um, the minute you get a vaccine, it doesn't mean that you're protected. It means you still have to uh, follow the rules of, um, you know, washing your hands, um, watching your distance, wearing a mask and, and also now watching your ventilation because until such time as, um, you know, the vast majority of the population probably approaching over 85 to 90% is vaccinated, um, we, we can still actually um, uh, get the virus. It just, the vaccine prevents a severe infection with the virus. That's very but, interesting that you say yeah. that because somebody actually asked, um, if I get the vaccine, would I, can I get the virus again? And yes, you can. It's just like a flu vaccine, like you mentioned to me yesterday. It's just like getting a flu shot. You can still get flu. Yeah. It, just, it just reduces the severity yeah. of... Yeah, or you can still get colds. And, and flu vaccine, um, you know, is changed every year. I mean, they change it looking at what the strains, how the strains change. So, you know, similar thing might happen with the COVID vaccine. We don't know as yet how long the immunity will last. But, I mean, it's a huge logistical exercise to get everybody on the planet immunised in two doses. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the reality is that um, the, you know, the basic behavioural vaccine, which is highly effective if people actually use it, um, is here to stay for the long time, for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, just to explain that a little bit um, more, I just wanted to show everybody this diagram, which is really, really important to understand, okay? And this mm -hmm. is, this explains transmission and why it is an accelerating pandemic. So basically, um, you probably heard of this figure called um, the r naught, which basically um, talks about how many people one person with COVID can infect. And they think it's sort of close to between two and three. So in this diagram, which is like a tree, if this one person has COVID, they can infect another three and those people can infect another two or three and then those people can infect another two. And, and so there you see how this... One person. You know, how all these curves, you get this, see how you get this exponentially um, growing number of people that are infected, mm. okay? Mm. So the only way to stop the pandemic, the pandemic will end when one person that person is vaccinated in, well one person infects less than one other person because mm. otherwise you have linear spread but if if there's one person is not infecting you know another person basically the pandemic will stop all right right and this is a, the same diagram to remember for one virus particle and for viral load later that one virus particle makes so many different you know replicates and makes so many so if you can reduce your viral load by wearing a mask and avoiding even one virus particle, you've saved your immune system that many virus particles to fight off. Mm. Okay? So I this is a really sort of excellent and important diagram uh, to remember. Now, the only way to stop person A from spreading it to these other people is by, you know, ba breaking that chain of transmission. So that's, you know, um, uh, you know, washing your hands, watching your distance. You know, mm. um, so physically distancing yourselves while remaining socially connected um, and wearing your masks. Now, the very important thing that has come up of late, which I wanted to cover, is um, the modes of transmission. So early on, it was all about the droplets. So they were talking about droplet and surface transmission. And you remember early on, I did a video on, you know, how to make up your, you know, disinfectant solutions in spray bottles. Yes. And yes. that's I mean, that's still important, um, but... They think surface transmission is, you know, not really a significant form of transmission. Obviously, it's important to make sure the surfaces are clean if somebody in your household has COVID. Um, but uh, the, the, the droplet was referring to the big droplets that we um, expel from our mouths when we cough and sneeze. And that's why there was the cough and sneeze into your elbow, staying home if you're sick and obviously wearing the mask. But um, now what they've admitted is that a major mode of spread is aerosols. Now, aerosols is um, the smaller particles that you release when you even just are breathing. Um, what? Or you talk 
or you sing. So the way you've got to think about it is that when somebody's talking, if you want to visualize it, it's like smoke. Okay, so I've just got a little bit of Glen 20 Dettol spray here. So, so imagine every time somebody's talking, they're releasing this fine spray. Okay. All right. Now, what's going to happen if there are a lot of people talking, and yeah. if they're singing, if they're singing or shouting, okay, and all the windows are closed, and there's a lot of people in the room, what's going to happen to these particles? I mean, imagine it's somebody smoking. And imagine it's a really toxic fume. I mean, imagine this is insect spray. I mm -hmm. mean, what's what's going to happen? Basically, it's going to concentrate in that mm -hmm. room. The particles mm -hmm. are going to concentrate mm -hmm. over time and over, you know, the volume, basically. Yes. And yes. that, if you think of that room then, that room has an incredibly high viral load. And so how is the best way that we can protect ourselves? Open the windows. Ventilation, yeah. open the door, yeah, so sit outside. This, this is the ideal house, you see, because the dollhouse. The dollhouse, the windows have no glass, okay? So the windows should be open. Now, we're lucky in South Africa and New Zealand, we're in the, you know, summer at yes. the moment. So, you know, opening the windows to ventilate is incredibly important because it dilutes all those particles. Um, but even if you open it a little bit, it makes a difference. The other thing is you're going to be wearing your mask, okay? And the mask obviously has to be clean and we went through all of this before. It has to be well fitted, okay? It has to be well fitted. You've got to keep it on the whole time. But you've also got to wear some eye protection, all right? Because the particles because, can go into your eyes as well. Yeah, because, I mean, imagine, imagine if, if that, this, was, this, was, um, this was like insect spray. And it's concentrating in the room. You're like, oh my god, I don't want it to hit my eyes. I mean, and this is this is going to infect you. Okay. Finally, uh, an excuse for us to wear shades indoors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can you can have a masquerade party. And and actually, the other point of this is that look, I mean, king and queen up here, they're okay because they're in the same bubble, right? But you know, Milan and um, Pocahontas, I'm pretty sure they're not from the same family. So if they were indoors. There is no safe distance. Even if, if you're in an enclosed room that's not ventilated, even if you're sitting on opposite sides of the room, you can still get infected. Wow, that's very interesting. Right? So, so, so does that, and that, goes, and that goes for public transportation. I mean, we use yes. a lot of public transportation yes. in, in South Africa. So from uh, minibus taxis to buses to, you know, if their windows are not open, even if the aircon is on, so if the air con is on, it's the same thing. You have to open the windows. Yeah, I mean, air conditioning is, um, you know, you've got to be careful in terms of uh, the direction of the flow. I mean, air con is not the best. I know in my surgery, I kept the air con off because I thought, oh, the vent will get, you know, maybe to sort of push their particles further towards me. So you have to really think. I mean, uh, um, so air filters are good. Um, extractor fans. Um, so if you're having a party, for example, the, the terrace is a much better place than inside. So outdoor, you know, outdoor entertaining is much better than being inside. I mean, obviously, you know, it's best to not entertain yes. um, uh, and, you know, maintain a bit dif distance but, um, and keep your masks on unless you are actually eating. Um, but uh, the other thing that people can get are these um, carbon dioxide sensors where you can sense exactly how much carbon dioxide. And I think if the level is, um, uh, uh, you know, less than um, 800, it's okay. But if it's getting more than 1,000, then you've got to open the windows and ventilate. Oh, Again, that's interesting. I've never heard of that. Yeah, yeah, so carbon dioxide sensors are something that, I mean, I've seen them on Amazon. They're not that expensive, but that's something that's, you know, going to become probably more prevalent. Um, but even simple things like having your kitchen extractor fan on, having your bathroom extractor fan on, having the bathroom window open. If um, somebody's to use the toilet in your house, make sure that they flush with the lid down because you can have a plume. Um, oh, with the lid down? Yes, that's very important as well. Wow. So these are all ventilation um, risk mitigation strategies, which is why I left this little doll's house here to remind myself. And that's, um, that's very interesting because, I mean, we are now, yes, we are in level three lockdown again in South Africa. 
Um, but I'm sure, you know, leading up to New Year's Eve and New Year's, people will have a friend or two or a family member or whatever the case might be. And I think it's very important to um, equip ourselves with that knowledge to know if you let people yeah. into your home, whether it's one person or two people or family or not family, but to know what to do when you allow people into your space. And everybody should speak quietly, like inside oh. voices. And oh. there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be um, shouting or singing. Um, oh. You know, if you're going to have a, a singing get together, it's got to be on Zoom because, you know, there were cases in the church where, you know, a choir practice, one person infected the whole, uh, you know, congregation, basically. So From singing, singing because... Yeah, because greater volume, more smoke. Okay. Okay, so more so particles... All... Maybe just WhatsApp each other when we're in the room yeah, yeah. together. No talking. Okay, we'll the mask know, on. I, look, I think the thing I think the thing to celebrate this New Year's is that there is a lot of hope. I think what people don't understand is that there was never a guarantee that they would get a vaccine, and to get so many at such high efficacies. I mean, these are vaccines that are over ninety percent effective. They are safe, and they've been produced in under a year. I mean, it's as remarkable as man landing on the moon. 